Good morning, everyone. This is Jurunum98 with a new morning vlog. I'm finding myself like just wanting to find more way, quick ways to express myself and just kind of talk about the, the thoughts I have as they rattle off in my brain. Kind of a more casual, unscripted type thing. And this morning, I've been thinking a lot about actually more like the past few days, like over the weekend, we had the 20th anniversary of the Microsoft Rare purchase. And I'm just thinking back on that, and I was, of course, uh, I think it was around, around, uh, let's see, I guess I was around uh, 15 when that, when that was announced, and that was, that was just literally earth shattering to me. And it's only because these are, these are franchises that I grew up with under, that were created under the, the Nintendo Rare banner. We had the Donkey Kong Country series, which produced some amazing games. We had Banjo-Kazooie, uh, Diddy Kong Racing, games that I believe really only existed because of that partnership in the first place. And a lot of people have debated, well, like, what would have happened to these franchises if these two stayed together? What if Nintendo decided to purchase them instead? I'm not here to really uh, relitigate that argument. I'm here more just to talk about how the reality of how things have happened since then. And I think the biggest impact is really, you, you think of the of the divorce analogy and you think of uh, parents splitting off. This was kind of a situation where parents split off and they split the children, where Donkey Kong, uh, the Donkey Kong series and so many of those characters under that franchise, which is given to them by Nintendo, that the world was created by Rare. The modern design of Donkey Kong is a Rare character. Um, Diddy Kong, of course, is a Rare character. King K. Rool, all those those memorable, wonderful uh, characters they, they made for that. And then, of course, uh, uh, Banjo-Kazooie was created as a Nintendo franchise. It was owned wholly by Nintendo, that was created by Rare, was owned wholly by Nintendo. And so Ninte Rare created that character with the that Nintendo spirit in mind. And so we have this wonderful Rare family of these of these franchises that, that Rare created, and it was just a great time. It, it really was. And but the thing about what happened is that when they when there was a when there was the, the Microsoft buyout then we had a complicated scenario of what to do with these characters that Rare created while they were working with Nintendo, and it I th kind of turned out slightly messy for, for some of these creations. I mean, we had Donkey Kong, where they said everything Donkey Kong is just owned by Nintendo. Everything that, um, everything that Rare did with Donkey Kong, it's still overall owned by Nintendo, although I do believe that even so, there are still some checks in place. Whenever Nintendo has to re-release Donkey Kong Country, they have to do some um, little checks with Rare and Microsoft to kind of finalize and okay it. But that's just with the um, basic re-release stuff for those previous Donkey Kong Country games. And thinking of the Donkey Kong Country series itself, it's it's kind of been all over the place since then. But, but, uh, afterwards, the Nintendo kind of tried to take Donkey Kong in a new direction. We had games like Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, the uh, Donkey Konga games, uh, various uh, Game Boy type games uh, like uh, DK um, DK Vine Swing. I think that's it was, I think that's what it was called, um, something like that. Um, and then, of course, we had the the retro revival, which is kind of funny when I think of that uh, that phrase. But with the developer Retro, and Retro, of course, created Donkey Kong Country Returns. And that itself was an amazing, great game. It, it Returns was was fantastic. I loved playing through that game. It just felt like bringing back everything that was special about Donkey Kong Country, and then adding some more and like a, 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 and like layering onto it. The one thing that was missing, of course, was some of the previous characters like King K. Rule, and they kind of went in their own direction there. And Tropical Freeze, Tropical Freeze, I think, is the second best Donkey Kong game ever. Next to, next to of course, Donkey Kong Country 2. That game was amazing, and, it, and the kind of cool thing about Tropical Freeze is that we had David Wise doing the music for that. It was kind of like revisiting an old friend. David Wise just came back, and he gave us wonderful, amazing new music. <laughs> just, just incredible. And, but that's with Donkey Kong. Of course, since Tropical Freeze, uh, the again, the problem with Thinking about Donkey Kong is that since it was created under Rare, Nintendo has had slight difficulty finding a new 
home for it. I mean, re Retro pretty much built, again, off of what Rare did, and once they couldn't do it anymore, then, then Donkey Kong um, just has kind of stayed in the, just stayed in the background again. So, so for the, again, the rumors are is that Nintendo is trying to move Donkey Kong internally so it can have a more permanent home. I do hope that is the case. Um, because, again, like, think of that meme where, like, uh, divorce does terrible things for children. Like, Donkey Kong is just one of the victims of, of that. And, but I, I hope Nintendo is hoping, to, is going to build on that and, like, maybe even bring back even more of that rare legacy that they previously built upon. Going back to Banjo-Kazooie here, I, it was kind of funny that Banjo-Kazooie itself, uh, after... After the rare purchase, there really wasn't so much of an immediate impact. It was just it's it was still waiting to be seen what would happen after after Microsoft bought them. Well, how's the Banjo Kazooie franchise going to do? Because it's a wholly rare thing. It, it yes, it was created for Nintendo, but it's Rare's creation, and so it, it made sense for Rare to have whole ownership of that franchise. That's that's their right for sure. And and again, and again, like I was I was. I was open. I was open to see what they would do with with Banjo Kazooie if they would continue that franchise. And of course, they did Grunty's Revenge uh, for the Game Boy Advance. I still haven't played that one. I need to one of these days. I need to play that game. It looks like a good, solid platformer. Um, but it, again, we were just waiting for that. Uh, what is going to be like? What is Banjo Kazooie under Microsoft going to be like? And then we had the announcement officially of the third Banjo Kazooie game, and I was very excited. I, I, I was, uh, that, that first initial teaser trailer really had me um, grip there. I, I wanted to see what, uh, what we were to bring to the table, and they gave little teases here and there, like little hints that it was going to be something a little bit different. Um, but they also were saying things like, well, oh, it's, it's also going to be the same thing and everything. And I, looking back, they were probably just talking about the characters in the world. But then they had Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts. And just for me as someone who... Uh, played Banjo-Tooie eight years prior, was anxiously waiting for that that new platformer. In that classic style, I, I, I was a little bit disappointed, but I did give Nuts and Bolts the good old try. It's it's a good game. I'll, I'll give it a... It's a good game for, for what it is, for, for what it's trying to bring to the table. It is very ambitious. I love the... Um, the just the customizability and the car building mechanic and the different ways that you can solve different tasks. But it just, to me, it felt like a genuine misstep when you think of all the different things that Rare could have done to really bring back the franchise that I don't think that was the right way to do it. That's that's just me. That's where I'm coming from. And that's where I'm slightly thinking that maybe, maybe, maybe if if they if Nintendo decided to buy them, what would happen to the Banjo-Kazooie series? I think we would have at least one more major 3D platformer. I, I, that's just my belief. I, I believe that. I believe we'd have at least one more major 3D platformer that would be more, more traditional. Um, just because, you know, the, the Nintendo is, it, the, the Nintendo, um, uh, client and the Nintendo audience, you make the type of games you feel you need for the audience. Nuts and Bolts, I feel, was made to try to tailor to the Xbox audience, or try to find and trying to attract the player base there. Um, it's, I, I just think it was made with that in mind, so, um, but, again, you know, what, the thing I'm encouraged by, though, is the last few years of seeing what seems to be the, the kind of almost like the mending and the bringing back together of Nintendo and Rare, um, and of course, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate being the best example of that. Super Smash Bros., of course, gave us King K. Rule was brought back. Um, and of course, Banjo Kazooie themselves were brought back. That was probably that like the happiest thing I've ever seen for a video game announcement. It made me just so happy. I was on Cloud Nine for days, and we had a literal rare reunion. And and Donkey Kong, Diddy, and K. Rool were like cheering because that's what that meant. That was a literal family reunion um, from from that divorce, and. And they got, they got to be together in the same game again, so that was amazing. And of course, we have Rare games now starting to appear on Nintendo systems again, like like, like the original Banjo-Kazooie, like GoldenEye. I feel some semblance of things starting to come back. And of course, there's still the the main question of still, what, but what about these franchises now? Again, hoping for Donkey Kong to come back. Just really, really hoping for that to come back soon and that those rumors pan out. 
Banjo Kazooie, I I don't know. <laughs> I want Banjo Kazooie to come back. Many people I talk to have just completely given up hope on that. I'm not one of those people. I will not stop hoping for Banjo. I hope they come back. I hope they come back someday. But this is the end of this. That's just kind of the things I wanted to just talk about. Uh, let me, guys, let me know what you thought of this. Uh, again, this is kind of more free flowing, rambling, um, kind of kind of video here. But I realize that this, there, I think there is a place for this on my channel. But let me guys know what your thoughts and all all the things I talked about here. Drop a like, subscribe to this channel, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone.